Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another Dragalia Lost video. Hopefully this time the volume is a little bit better. So today I'm going to be going over the units that are inside the Gala Dragalia Remix. Give my thoughts about them, whether or not you should really be summoning all that much. And that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, you can leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Give me your thoughts about these dudes too. Of course, tell me if you're summoning. I will start saying that this is the most obvious thing. The 1000 day celebration is going to be coming near the end of the month. I think we're going to know a little bit more it in the coming week or so. Um, nobody knows what's in there. We know it's not going to be a Gala Dragalia now. Well, actually, they could very easily just release another Gala Dragalia on the 1000 day because who cares? <laughs> But that is something to always keep in mind, is that the 1000 day unit might be something amazing, it might be the return of a collab or something, nobody really knows. It could be nothing, it could be who knows, it could just be a summer unit and they call it done, but something to keep in mind. So, let's get into it. This is a Gala Jigalia remix, meaning the only two Gala units that are going to be on it are Gala Shell and Gala Reborn Poseidon. Um, Gala Luca is getting his Mana Spiral pretty soon. And they've chosen not to feature him. So, that's nice. And the two new adventures are Nino and Fayblade Tobias. Fayblade? No, Fay Blessed. I was thinking of Beyblade, but with fairies in it. Alright, let's start with Nino, who has a horse. Um, the sheltered scion of a bloodline with both human and fairy roots. She and her ancestors steward wisdom of history's hidden truths and the so-called key to perdition. When in danger, her fairy powers awaken in the form of a lone wing. Fairy stance. This is the stance. Deals damage to enemies directly ahead and partially fills the user's dragon drive god dra dragon drive job dragon user's dragon drive gauge. Also, she is a wind. Um, during dragon drive, consumes some of the user's dragon drive gauge, deals damage to enemies directly ahead, then fills 100% of the skill skill gauge after use. Damage is 1,389 over 1 hit. Skill energy required is 2,714. Dragon Drive energy gained is 750. During Dragon Drive, it's 938 over 1 hit and damage is 79 times over 6 hits. And the skill energy required is the same and the Dragon Drive energy consumed is 650. Special effects, skill prep, potency 100%. Crescent, fa Crescent Fairy? Fairy? Sure. Deals damage to the target and nearby enemies and reduces their strength. During Dragon Drive, deals damage to the target and nearby enemies and reduces their strength and defense. Damage to 234 over 6 hits. Skill energy required is 8,415. Special effects is strength of minus 10%. Lasts 30 seconds. During Dragon Drive, it is 320 over 6 hits. Same energy required and it's 10% strength and 5% defense. Does not stack. And just to be sure, let me see what she is a sword. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's very unfortunate. Dragon haste, fifteen percent. Um, win combo equals critical rate five. If a team member is attuned to win, increase their critical rate by one percent for every ten hit combo. That's actually very good. This effect can't stack up to twenty times. Okay, so twenty percent. That's not bad, I think. Blessed Bloodline 2 grants the user a Dragon Drive gauge and changes the Shapeshift button into a Dragon Drive button. Tapping this button activates the Dragon Drive. Dragon Drive grants the following effects. The user's standard attacks, dash attacks, and four strikes are changed to fill the user's Dragon Drive gauge if they connect. The user's strength is increased by 15%. And the user's attack race is increased by 10%. No change to the defense, it looks like. Freeze is 100%. And Flurry Devastation, 13%. Okay, so... The... She looks like she could be fine. Dragon Drive units are usually pretty good. They kind of... Um, end up doing a lot of damage. So I'm not really afraid of the potential for her damage. The one thing I'm very curious about is how good she's going to be when you stack it up to a bunch of the other sword units in Wind. So if you don't know this, Wind has a stacked cast of sword users. It's got Templar Hope. It's got Morgana from Persona 5. It's got Galaranzel, who is the best unit on Wind in general. Um, and it's got another unit that I'm completely forgetting because he was the Gala unit. Gal Galilea, <laughs> he was uh, one of the better. So there's a lot of competition for Sword Wind, um, especially if you're someone who like 
loves to use Galaranzel, then it's kind of hard to justify making room for anyone else, but... I mean, I do it all the time. Wind has enough strong units that you can build a team that kind of goes with anything, so you could definitely use Nino on a team maybe with Galanaut instead, and take advantage of her combo stuff. So there's ways around it for sure. Um, it just is something to keep in mind is that because there's so many good sword units, you would want to use them in the same team, but then that would require you to craft the, the wind weapon again. So it's something to kind of keep in mind. Um, I'm interested to see how she does. She could end up doing perfectly fine. I've learned to not underestimate dragon drive units, and it seems like she would be able to hit very hard. If she's the hardest hitter, I don't know. Gonna have to wait and see on that. But it's also interesting because it doesn't look like she has anything like, um, what is it? Windlash. That's the, the wind effect that causes it. So no world poison, no windlash. So she's all 100% just DPS from what it looks like. So, interested to see how she goes. Fabless Tobias. Tobias is, I think, also a sword unit on wind, but he's water in this one. Um, Tobias clad in armor imbued with fey protection, forged with the prayers of fairies who broke her own wings. Of a fairy who broke her own wings to shape shepherd humankind towards peace. It can manifest in a single wing. Granting flight to a warrior who could fight for those in need. So is he also a Dragon Drive character? Deals damage to target and nearby enemies. Inflicts freeze and partially fills the skill gauge of Fey Lance. Damage is 1000 over 2 hits. Skill energy required is 2738. When it's a shared skill it is 11,321. Special effect freeze lasts 6 seconds. Skill prep potency 20%. Fey Lance activates Fey Lance. During Fey Lance, the user's standard attack patterns will change, and the user will be unable to move, use force strikes, or dodge. The skill will also become a spiritual purge and immediately readied for use. Fey Lance will end after a set period of time, or after using any skill other than Fey Judgment. Spiritual purge deals damage to surrounding enemies and inflicts frostbite. Skill energy required is 20,000. <laughs> Special effects Fey Lance last 10 seconds does not stack. After skill change, damage 1,750 over 2 hits. Damn. Skill energy required is the same with 20,000. Special effects Frostbite last 21 seconds, triggers every 2.9 seconds. So. Huh. So, okay. So it's like a Berserker state for a small time being? Co op ability is HP 15%. Chain Co-op ability is water above 10 hits equals critical rate 13%. If the user is attuned to water, increase the critical rate by 13%. Flurry Devastation 13%. Stun Resistance 100% and Overdrive Punisher 13%. Uh, mm, uh, this is another unit where I'm just going to have to wait to see how much... <laughs> what is going on in his second mode. Because uh, it sounds like... Yeah, you're just building up for a move that will deal over 3,000 damage. During Phalanx, user stand attacks patterns will change. So then this move, okay, so you'll be able to attack normally, but then what are the changes to your attack? What does it end up being? There's probably a video that shows it off a little bit more. Kind of interested to see how this is. Can't really judge it. It does. He, I do like that the second skill he gives frostbite, but it seems like with the cost of how much it is, is twenty thousand. You're not going to be using it all that much. At least I think you want it. Well, actually, it depends. Maybe if you're using the bunny and other stuff, it could end up being extremely easy. Hmm. Uh, interesting unit. Gonna have to wait and see how he is. Water is a weird class for me. I'm never a hundred percent sure. Ever since they've kind of taken down Katrina, Karina, not Katrina, I'm thinking of the unfortunate hurricane um, <laughs> that devastated uh, a nation. I should stop talking. Um, yeah, ever since they took down Karina, I feel like they've been balancing water a little bit different. Where I feel like on paper they end up looking kind of great, but then when you actually use them... They're not as good as you would hope them to be. At least that's what I found recently. So wait and see on this one for me. Uh, Galashelle, she's Galashelle. Look at her. She's fantabulous, smiling, going, oh. And then we got Gala Poseidon. Uh, 
the go-to strong boy for water. So very. This makes sense to go with Tobias. This doesn't make sense other than it's been a bit for her to return. So should you summon on this banner? I don't really know because there's so many unknowns out there. Um, there's just too many things. If you love Nino or you love Tobias, I say go for it. Um, live your life. Live in your truth. Um, if you're someone who's a little bit more practical in the game and wants to kind of stay not really on the spending money side of it, I would suggest kind of waiting to see what the 1,000 day is. They're not limited. They both seem perfectly cool. For all I know, Nino could end up being the most powerful unit in the world, but if that's the case, then later down the road you could eventually find her or wait for a pickup banner of her somewhere. Um, anything is possible, to be honest. <laughs> Except for the five ticket uh, being changed. So, yeah, that's kind of how I feel about these two. Both very interesting, both very unknowns, and they're both unfortunately timed right before the 1,000 day celebration thing they got planned in near the end of the month. I think on the 22nd we'll know a little bit more in the info about it. I will say if they are trying to get people tempted to summon, I'm going to assume that these two are just going to deal in crazy damage, and that's going to be their thing. But wait and see. So that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. Till next time, I hope I wish you guys the best, and I'll see you guys in the next adventure. Peace out!